All right, what's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today I have a general surgeon uh, who's gonna tell us all about the field of general surgery and how, what, what it takes to get to that point and some advice for you guys. So without further ado, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, Dr. Webb, I'm uh, Dr. David Hinden. I'm a fourth year general surgery resident in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Awesome, man. And um, where did you go to med school and do your, uh, where did you go to med school at? So I've been in Philadelphia forever. I went to uh, medical school in Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania. Um, I've been kind of within the same couple mile radius uh, for over a decade now. Okay, awesome, man. And um, did you know you always wanted to be a doctor or is it something you kind of just stole upon? As you know, I think I was always thinking about it a little bit. Um, you, my dad was an anesthesiologist. Uh, he just retired. Um, I grew up with, you know, one of those great pediatricians that you kind of look up to as a kid. Um, and, you know, I always liked science and uh, kind of working with people. So it was always in the back of my head that I might want to do it. Okay. Awesome. And, you know, most people decide on a specialty, um, usually third or fourth year of medical school. When did you decide you wanted to become a general surgeon? Did you do something you always wanted to do, so sur uh, become a surgeon or? Um... I, I think I decided probably, I guess, late third year. I mean, I, um, I came in wanting to do pediatrics. I'd done some volunteering with kids and I was sure that was the thing for me. Um, but then on my surgical rotations, I, I loved working with my hands. I loved sewing. Yeah. Um, and I, I had this, um, I mean, this is a, it was good for me. It was, bad for the student I was with. I, I had this moment where I was in the OR, the, the resident was letting us both close opposite sides of the neck and he was kind of a jerk and he was in a hurry and I finished my side and he took away uh, the needle driver from other med students to just give it to, uh -huh. give it to him, let, let's get out of here. And he had me co close up the other student's side. Yeah. And uh, it got me thinking, you know, maybe this is, maybe this is like a skill of mine that I should really consider. And that was kind of it for me. Okay, awesome. And you say you're a fourth year general surgery resident. Um, uh, how's your residency going for you? It's going okay. It's, um, I, as you know, it, it can be especially crazy um, depending on the service, like, like trauma. Uh -huh. uh, I know you've got crazy, crazy trauma cases that you guys get too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what is a typical day for you? Uh, usually starts at what time and kind of ends at what time? And how often are you on call? Residency is great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it gets especially crazy. Um, like you guys, we rotate through different services and, uh, I'm now at the point in residency where every service that I'm on, I'm, I'm the chief of that service. Yeah. Um, so when I'm rotating through trauma and I'm the trauma chief, that can be super crazy because you can, you can be lucky enough to be lying down and within, you know, the next 270 seconds, you could be in the trauma bay with your hand inside someone's chest, you know, in a clamp in their aorta. And it's just, yeah. <laughs> you never know what's happening. Yeah. Um, which which you know has its ups and downs but it's uh it's going fast i'll say that got you and for the people who don't know what a general surgeon is can you like, kind of explain uh, what does a general surgery uh sur general surgeon do sure so general surgery is um it's it's one of these fields that's kind of in flux as the world of medicine becomes more specialized um i think back in the day general surgeons did pretty much everything other than ortho, neurosurgery, and cardiac surgery. Um, and they still do, depending on, on the parts of the country. Um, but there are other areas within general surgery that are focused maybe just on the colon or just on cancer or even more specific, just on your endocrine glands and stuff. Um, so general surgery, you know, the meaning takes on, you know, where you are. But I'd say in general, it's, it's surgery in the abdomen and then surgery elsewhere in the body and the soft tissue. Okay, so you have to be comfortable with any part of the body, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, yeah, absolutely. And, and what is the uh, training required to become a general surgeon? I know you have to go through four years of uh, college, four years of medical school, and then anywhere between five to seven years of residency to become a general surgeon. That's right, that's right. Depending on the residency program, um, there are everywhere you have to do at least five clinical years. Uh -huh. um, and then there are some general surgery programs in the country where it's required two of research, so five plus two, mm -hmm. you're signing on to do all seven. Um, there are some where if you want to do research, they tell you not to come there because they don't have enough uh, coverage for the call cycle. 
Um, and then where I am right now at Temple, um, they allow two students each year, excuse me, two residents each year to go into the lab if you want to. Um, and that was something I kind of sought out uh, even from the interview process and from the beginning of residency. And so uh, I spent two years in the lab doing some uh, bioengineering stuff and, and now I'm back. This is my PGY six year, but my yeah. uh, clinical PGY four year. Okay. And that, that's a long time, especially I thought five years was a long time. I think seven years of residency is extremely long. Uh, what do you have to say to people um, when they look at that number? Wow. It takes that many years to become a surgeon. I don't know if I can do it. What kind of advice would you uh, give them? Well, you know, I, I, I still believe the advice that, that my dad gave me when I was trying to decide. He said, you know, think about what you want to spend the rest of your life doing. And, you know, to spend a couple extra years up front or to give all of that up just to have a couple less years up front, yeah. um, you really got to gotta weigh both of them together. Um, I think, you know, as you start getting further and further out, um, you know, if, if you've done five or seven years of residency and then you're deciding between a one year and a four year fellowship, then it starts being like, yeah. okay, now let's, let's get, <laughs> let's get to living. But, um, I think when you're choosing a residency, at least for me, um, it, it seemed worth it in the long run to, to have the kind of career that I wanted after. Okay. And after all of these years in training, uh, once you're done with your residency, how much can a general surgeon make, uh, kind of starting off right out of uh, residency? Um, so if you're in an academic environment, um, I actually um, I haven't looked at the numbers recently. My understanding is it's probably uh, low 200s in an right. academic environment. Um, and then I think private practice, the averages is, I believe, uh, closer to the 300, 400 range. Um, and okay. uh, of course, you know, there are extremes and opposite yeah, yeah, ends depending on how you tailor your practice and everything. Gotcha. And this evening you're on call. Um, describe like a typical call night for you. Uh, what do you usually do? Do you get to sleep at all while you're on call and how oh. you're on call? <laughs> well, so tonight, so I'm actually lucky. Tonight I'm home. Um, I'm on a Q3 cycle right now. So this is, I guess, my pre-call night. Okay. Um, but when you're on call, uh, if you are right now, I'm on a community, uh, community hospital. Um, so when I'm on call, I'm in-house overnight. Um, but if there are no emergencies and nothing's going on, I can do a little work in the call room, maybe even get to nap a little bit. Um, yeah. When you're on call at like the main, at the mothership, yeah. then um, you're seeing consults all night. And if you're on trauma, especially in the warm weather, you are in the trauma bay dealing with people who've gotten shot or stabbed or you're in the OR, um, you know, exploring them and trying to control the bleeding and everything. Yeah. And I was going to ask you about that because Philadelphia is not the most really is a city in terms of uh, violence. Uh, what's the craziest thing you, you've seen in residency as a general surgeon? Oh my gosh. I mean, um, well, there's crazy to me and there's crazy to the rest of the world. So yeah. I think, <laughs> I think the rest of the world finds um, the whole process of an ED thoracotomy kind of crazy. And, and even for us, it's kind of crazy. I mean, um, so for your listeners, depending on, on or your, your viewers, depending on yeah. what someone's familiarity is, um, if someone has been shot or stabbed or had some sort of trauma to the chest and they right. come in without a pulse, um, we perform what's called a thoracotomy in, in the middle of the ER, literally yeah. like they pull a curtain. It's not even an out and you, you cut the chest open, you, you lift the lung, you, you cut the heart out of the sack that it's sitting in to relieve any blood. And then you, you actually slide your hand behind their chest and you put a clamp on the aorta and that whole process happens within about a minute or so. Yeah. Um, so it's like this crazy tour de force. And when you have people, um, you bring people back and they survive and they walk out the hospital, that's just, um, that, that still boggles my mind. I think that's one of the crazier things yeah. we see. And yeah. talk about literally having someone's life in your hands. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. you literally, they, you, you have their heart and you basically control uh, whether that patient lives or dies. So that, that, that's amazing. Um, yeah. And speaking about family life, um, a lot of people are turned away from the field of surgery due to constraints with family, starting a family, having kids? What would you say? Because I understand you have a family as well. Yeah, I, I uh, recently got engaged a couple months ago. Yeah, um, uh, thank you. I, I think that um, surgery is like a, it's like a micro, uh, it's like a smaller version of the whole medical world. So you can go to either end of the spectrum and sort of tailor your surgical career based on the lifestyle that you want or depending on what your priority is. Um, if you are 
you know, the end of the, the spectrum where you're doing cardiac surgery, transplant surgery, um, that's probably the least predictable lifestyle. Gotcha. Um, trauma's up there, but it's still sort of like shift work. So when you're not at the hospital, you're typically not going to go in unless it's like, you know, that, that Amtrak crash that happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and then at the other end of the spectrum, things like breast surgery, um, soft tissue only surgery, you can have a pretty, a pretty nice lifestyle depending, you know, how you've tailored your career a couple of days in the OR, a couple of days in the office, really no emergencies to speak of. They'll bring you in from home. Um, so it's, it's depending how important other parts of your life are, you can sort of control the lifestyle based on your priorities. Okay. Awesome. And what other advice would you give to aspiring students out there? Those who are maybe interested in medicine or not even interested in medicine, what would you kind of advice would you give to people um, trying to reach their goals? I think the best advice is um, work. If you think that there's even a possibility that you want to do it, or it should be more than that. If you're interested in going into medicine, um, work like crazy, just grind constantly and get the absolute best scores and best grades you can now yeah. because then it's so much better to put all the work in up front and have like options, have yeah. lots of options, have programs that want you and then you get to choose and sort of see what fits right for you than to not put in all that work up front and then decide like, you know, when it's sort of after the fact that like, you know, you really wanted to do this and then you're scrambling to get post back courses to sort of um, add to your CV and show that you're serious. And it's so much harder in the other end. Um, so for, for folks who want to go into medicine, um, I say try not to be distracted. You know, don't sit on Instagram and post pictures of how hard you're studying. Yeah. Just study. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. all, all the, just do, do the work and, um, you know, it, it's worth it in, in the long run because then you have your options in front of you. Okay, awesome. And if anybody out there wants to contact you, um, do you have... Uh, some contact information. I'm understand you have a great you have a great YouTube channel. You guys should definitely check that out. I'll put a link. Oh, thanks a lot. You know, um, what ways can people contact you if they want to contact you? Sure. So, uh, so YouTube's great. Uh, my Instagram um, channel is uh, the Surgeon Life, and uh, I think I forgot to mention you before the call. I'm on Twitter too. Okay. Um, and and Twitter, Twitter and YouTube are both my name. Um, so David Hinden, H I N D I N. Okay, awesome. I'll put links to all those descriptions for those of you out there who want to get in touch with Dr. Hendon. Uh, but thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll be posting a new video, and these are videos you don't want to miss. And also check out my new series, Careers in Medicine, where I'll be featuring professionals from all different types of uh, careers in medicine. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Dr. Hendon. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.